Uh, my first question is, how was your blog born? It was actually a few years ago, I can pinpoint the day. Um, I discovered a food blog for the first time and I spent, I was actually at school and I skipped class and spent the next three hours reading it <laughs> just because I was so amazed by it. And like over the next few months, I just, like every time I was on the computer, I was like, ooh, let's go get more food. And it just became this thing I did. And there was one day I realized like, I could do this. <laughs> and it just sort of popped out of nowhere. And, you know, I had a camera, I had the urge to bake. And so... A few days later, you know, my blog was born. <laughs> Which is an extremely popular uh, pastry uh, blog, right? Yeah, I'm not so good at the savory food, but I really like dessert. So, you know, butter sh and sugar is my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, do you do the photos yourself? Yes. Um, it's sort of been a journey when I first started taking photos of food, like, I was using flash over the top of the stove and you couldn't even see what it was. Like I made a cake and it, it really didn't look much like a piece of cake, didn't much look different from a piece of toast and so there's it's a little issue. Um, but I really tried to work on it and you know it was finding the right light, finding the right camera and then finding food props and sort of over the last year and a half brought everything together. <laughs> and the photos are truly amazing. So have you ever considered the idea of giving up the cooking and blog and actually starting a career as a food photographer? You know, it's something I've thought about, but I'm not sure how much of a reality it is yet. Because um, I actually take food photos on the floor in this like two foot space right next to the window. And I'm like all crouched down in the corner with my camera and it's just kind of a mess. <laughs> but... Um, it's something I'm really interested in and like each time I sit down to photograph something new I'm always learning something new and so I think once I can develop my skills further maybe but until then I'm just gonna keep working at it. Oh it's really good already so the starting point is amazing. So um, what can you tell me about the food blogger community in the United States? You know, from what I've noticed, it's, it's really a tight-knit group, and everyone's really supportive of each other. There's not really, like, competition to see who can do the best recipes. It's not like that. Um, and each person sort of has their own unique thing to share. And so I think the food blog community is really about sharing what you know, whether it's, you know, new recipes, kitchen tips, little anecdotes about your life, how food fits in your life. And so it's all these little aspects rolled into one, and I think that's what makes the food blog community so strong and it's also a community I'm really proud to be a part of because of those things. So uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you how did you start actually blogging? What did you do before that? Um, I, was, I was actually in school to be a physicist and I spent so many so many hours just doing homework and it consumed my life and so it reached a point where I just needed some sort of creative outlet and that's when I think I when I discovered the food blog I was like oh my god this is amazing and so I spent so much time doing it because it's I didn't have a creative outlet and I didn't have anything to do besides physics homework and so um, I kept I tried blogging and then I did physics at the same time and it sort of reached the point where I was sitting in like a classroom and instead of writing notes about science I'd be drawing wedding cakes <laughs> or when I was in meetings I'd be developing recipes and trying to think of new awesome ideas instead of actually paying attention to what I was supposed to <laughs> and so I think you reached the point where it's like you know I'm not really into physics anymore I'm into baking and it was making that leap from physics to baking that was really the hard part and because you know, it's like I could be a NASA scientist or I could be a baker. And so a lot of people have, well, my mom kind of was like, well, that's a, that's a change. <laughs> that's a drastic change, I think. <laughs> yeah, because it's sort of giving up all this, you know, what society considers a very good career towards, you know, something I love. And so it was, it was making that leap and, and doing something different that, you know, it was hard, but it was totally worth it, and I don't regret it at all. You know, I love what I do. So apart from your food blog, your pastry blog, what do you do for a living? 
Um, I'm currently working three jobs. <laughs> One of them is I, I work at a local patisserie in town, and so, you know, I'm up at 5 a.m. to bake every morning, and I love it. It's something, you know, I enjoy doing, and then um, I've also loved teaching, and I think teaching science and math is sort of how science has come into my life. It's not, you know, sitting down and researching. It's, you know, helping someone learn something new, and so in the afternoons, I, I tutor math and science to kids, and I food blog, and that's become a part-time job as well. So I work a lot, but I love what I do, and so, you know, it's worth it. So I was wondering, where do you get the um, recipes for your blog? You know, they come from all sorts of different places. It can be any, like, a photograph of a decadent dessert can be like, oh, I need to make that, like, right now, and, and that sort of you know, is where some inspiration comes from. It can come from, like, looking at an old cookbook and being like, oh, I've never heard of that before. Or, you know, someone just saying chocolate cake, and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I get distracted. <laughs> um, I find, like, I, I'll adapt and play around with ideas from, like, other food bloggers, or, you know, sometimes I'll come up with my own, and that's always an adventure, um, because it can take six or seven times in the kitchen to get a recipe just right, and so there's a lot of it can be frustration and a lot of wasted ingredients. And there was one day I think I had 36 muffins sitting on the counter, and none of them were were good. <laughs> and so it was just working around that. So why did you choose to take pictures of food instead of I don't know make video recipes? You know, um, part of it has to do with time, and I don't really have the equipment to do video even though it's something I like to do, like I really admire those who can do it. But all said and done with, like, this might sound a bit silly, but I think food is sexy. I think it looks sexy in the right light with the right shadows, and, and I don't see how much it's, like, different from, you know, photographing a model some days. And so, you know, that's where my drive to photograph food comes from, and it's seeing how good I can make something look. And so I think photography is really the best um, sort of, can't think of the word I'm looking for, but you know, realm for doing that. Okay, so I was I was wondering, do you ever think of putting together your pictures and uh, put them in a book and sell it, for example? I haven't really thought about that. Um, mostly because I'll like take pictures and I'll be like, "This is the best picture I've ever taken," and then like a week later, I'm like, "Oh, I could have changed that and that and that and that." And so it's sort of it's a work in progress, and I think. Maybe once I reach a point where I can look at some of my photographs and be like, no, that's still a really good photo. <laughs> um, I'll be more, more inclined to do that. But. Um, one other thing that I was wondering is, uh, are you trained as a chef? No. <laughs> Not at all. Like, um, growing up, my grandma and my mom, and these are the people who, like, sort of taught me things in the kitchen. And from there, it was sort of just teaching myself. Like when I discovered baking, it was just like trial and error in the kitchen. And so, you know, I'm not a stranger to kitchen mistakes and mishaps. Like I, I burn things. I ruin recipes because I forget the main ingredient. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not a great baker by any means, but I, I try and I like to do what I do. And so, you know, it doesn't matter to me if I mess up another batch of cupcakes. <laughs> it's all so part of the game. So, uh, what what are your expectations, your plans for the future of the blog? You know, I think it's hard to have expectations for the blog, um, simply because when I started, I didn't think anyone but my mother was going to read it, and for a long time, only my mother read it, <laughs> and so, um, you know, in that respect, it's hard. You know, I never could have expected that thousands of people would visit and comment and you know, send an email saying, like, I love what you do. So, like, I'm, I'm really humbled by my readers. Like, this is not something I ever expected would happen to me or could have anticipated. And so, you know, I don't really put expectations on the blog or goals for the success, but it's sort of I put expectations on myself. And so, like, you know, I sit down and I want to take a really good picture of food, and it might take, you know, two or three tries to get that photo, but it's something I'm willing to do. Or you know, working with recipes, I'm I'm willing to take six or seven times, you know, to make the same thing and change just slight ingredients to make it work out. And so I think, you know, I don't have expectations for the blog, but I, I keep.
keep on trying to improve myself. So you've never considered, for example, a partnership with a website like allrecipes.com? Um, not really. Like I, I'm not sure I have the time to do that. And my blog right now is sort of enough of a challenge for me to keep up with, you know, with its growing and trying to, you know, keep producing, you know, quality recipes or good photos. Um, Kristen, I really thank you for being with us today and for your time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>